Hello everyone, welcome to lecture 22 in physical organic chemistry. In our previous class, we had started off with the theory of electrocyclic ring closing and ring opening reactions in which we had seen the various theories and their application in deducing the mechanism and the permissibility of electrocyclizations or ring openings. Moving forward, we will now see some examples and classes of electrocyclic ring closing and ring opening reactions. As always, most of the material from this particular lecture has been sourced from Professor Shankaraman's uh, textbook, The Pericyclic Reactions, and as well as his lecture notes. Let's revise the selection rules. Uh, as we had seen previously, we had seen that the 4N systems undergo a con-rotatory electrocyte like ring opening or ring closing reaction in the ground state and that is a thermally allowed process whereas the 4N plus 2 systems undergo a disrotatory uh, ring opening or ring closing in the ground state that is thermally allowed process whereas the opposite is true for a photochemical process. The 4N systems would undergo a disrotatory electrocyclic reaction in the excited state whereas the 4N plus 2 would undergo a con-rotatory electrocyclic reaction in the excited state. Let us see some of the examples and types of systems that we are going to see in this particular lecture. So we can see here these are the 4N systems. This is the 2 pi plus 2 pi uh, system. This is the 2 pi plus 2 sigma system. Whereas here it is the 6 pi system. Here this is the 4 pi plus 2 pi system, uh, 2 sigma system. Here you can see there is an 8 pi system. And here it is a 6 pi plus 2 pi, 2 sigma system. We will see some very important examples in which we will come across a 4n plus 2 system which has two electrons where n equal to 0 and these are the classical uh, cyclopropyl cation allyl cation systems. So these will undergo by Woodward Hoffman rules a disrotatory ring opening or ring closing under thermal conditions. Whereas in the photochemical conditions or in the excited state, they would undergo a con-rotatory electrocyclic reaction. We can also see a variety of four electron systems which are different from the classical butadiene systems where you have the allyl anion, which is, uh, there should be a negative charge here, which is like a cyclopropyl anion. So the four N electron systems will include examples from the cyclopropyl anion allyl anion system and then you can also have the cyclopentenyl cation system so these are also the 4n systems which again by woodward hoffman rules will undergo a con-rotatory electrocyclic reaction in the ground state then these will be uh, six 4n plus two type of systems, six electron systems. Obviously in thermal state, this will undergo a disrotatory electrocyclic reaction. We can then go on to higher electron systems in which we can see the cycloheptadienyl anion and the heptatrienyl anion. We can see cyclooctatriene system, which will give you the octatetraene uh, type of skeleton and we can go to cationic systems and we can see the cyclononatrienyl cation and the nonatetraenyl cation systems. We'll see examples of all these systems. Before that, we will like to look into one very important concept in electrocyclic reactions. That concept is the concept of torcoselectivity. Torque selectivity was defined by K. N. Hooke in 1996, where he defined it as the predisposition of a given R substituent for a con rotatory motion. So he showed by examples and by theory that 
a donor substituent would prefer a con out mode whereas a pi acceptor substituent on the system would prefer a con in mode what does this mean suppose we have this particular system if this has to undergo a con rotatory ring opening then in the con in mode this r substituent would come in here so this would be the bond movement would be like this so this would be the con in mode the r substituent is going into the system whereas in the con out mode this would be somewhat like this so the r substituent would go out and would be in the trans type of predisposition so you can see here what does kn hook say the donor substituents prefer con out mode okay methyl is a donor substituent obviously so it prefers the con out mode thereby giving the r group when it is methyl in the this particular predisposition whereas if you have a formyl group which is a pi acceptor substituent it prefers the con in and in this particular case you get the r group in this particular orientation look at this particular example you see here one of them is a cho the other is a ch2obn now this is a pi acceptor and this is a donor substituent so obviously this prefers to go in a con in mode therefore you get that particular isomer as the major this is a beautiful example of targo selectivity you can see one of the substituents is a donor the other is a pi acceptor the pi acceptor prefers to have a con in mode therefore you get this particular as the major and this particular one as the minor so this prefers the con out this prefers the con in and this predominates here so you get this particular uh, substitute uh, orientation or this particular isomer as a major going further if you have systems like this you can see here the examples of torco selectivity and you can see very clearly when there are large substituents okay when the donor donor capacity is high you get very high isomeric ratios as you would expect from the torco selectivity similarly if you see here between a methyl and an o methoxy obviously the o methoxy is a donor substituent prefers the con out type of process and you get this particular isomer as the major in this particular case both the methyl and o methoxy are the good donor substituents but the methoxy predominates over the methyl we have seen already the example of this kind where the cho prefers the con in mode and therefore you get only this particular isomer in this particular case now there is a selectivity issue between cho and co2me obviously electrophilicity wise and the capacity of this particular group to be a better pi acceptor leads to this particular group predominating in the con in mode therefore you get this particular system now this is a 4n plus 2 system six electron system undergoes a thermal electrocyclization in the dis rotatory mode giving rise to this particular moiety which can be trapped very easily by tetracycloethylene in a desalder reaction giving you this particular bicyclic system let's see now the variety of systems based on ring sizes let's first consider the three membered ring systems to see the three membered ring systems let us first go to the case of cyclopropyl cations 
Cyclopropyl cations obviously are uh, 4n plus 2 uh, systems where n is equal to 0. So they are two electron systems. Obviously, they will undergo a disrotatory electrocyclic reaction, whether it is ring opening or ring closing. Now, how can we be sure that these systems undergo a disrotatory opening? Because one would think that once the cation is formed, the stereoselectivity or stereospecificity does not matter, but it does matter. And this has been proved by NMR studies of these particular carbonium ions, which are formed from distereomeric 2,3-dimethyl-1-chlorocyclopropanes in superacid medium. Okay, so if we do the solvolysis of these three isomers, in one isomer you can see the two methyl groups and the chlorine are cis to each other. In the second one, the two methyls are trans to each other and one of the methyl is trans to the chlorine. Whereas in the other third isomer, that is the third diastereomer, you see here both the methyls are cis to each other, but they are trans to the chloro group. Okay, so upon solvolysis, you can see here each of these undergoes a disrotatory ring opening, thereby clearly showing up in the NMR studies at minus 100 degrees that these are occurring with very high stereoselectivity. Each of these isomers will undergo only one of the two modes of disrotatory ring opening. Obviously, this is coming from the torcoselectivity. Why is this reaction driven? These reactions are driven by relieving of the ring strain and the charge delocalization in the allyl cation that accompanies ring opening. Okay, so once you open the ring, it forms an allyl cation and obviously charge delocalization leads to stabilization and the major factor is the relief of the ring strain. There are two scenarios here. All this could be concerted or the ring could open after the CCL bond has been cleaved and then you would get a fully uh, developed charge on the cyclopropenium uh, ion. For example, something like this. You would get this and then you would have the two methyl groups on this. Whether they are cis or trans, it would not matter. In that scenario, the two cis dimethyl isomers would not be different, obviously, because then this becomes a C2 symmetric molecule and this will not give you any selectivity. But that is not the case. What is observed that these are very different. So this fellow here and this give very different data in NMR. So if the chlorine was leaving prior to the breaking of this particular bond, then the two systems, this system 1 and 3, would not be different in NMR. Now the observed stereospecificity and the torcoselectivity in all these cases suggest that the CC bond, we are looking at the CC bond, which is considered now as the HOMO, and the CX bond, which is now considered the LUMO, the two cleavages take place in a concerted manner and the electron density of the breaking CC bond assists the cleavage of the CX bond. This is your CX bond. This would be possible only if the disrotatory ring opening occurs in one direction so that you can enable the electron density of the CC bond to participate from the backside of the CX bond, some, something similar to the SN2 mechanism in structure A. Now, during the inward motion of the two methyl groups, because you see this particular isomer, okay, 
there would be steric interaction if both of them are to follow this particular mode and this would lead to a difference in reactivity of the two cis diastereomer as we had seen in the previous slide can we quantify this yes we can quantify this let us see some examples suppose we see the reaction of these particular tosylates in the first case okay the trans tosylate reacts 4500 times faster than the cis tosylate obviously we are seeing the reactivity difference where this particular bond is now assisting the cleavage of this particular bond and we are seeing here that the disrotatory ring opening is assisting the cleavage of the CO tosylate bond. In both the cases, the methyl groups are cis. The only difference between the two is the orientation of the tosylate. In one case, the tosylate is cis to both the methyl groups. In another case, it is trans. And obviously, the trans one is reacting faster going by the postulate that we had seen on the previous slide. Look at the second example here, this bicyclic system, the fused uh, bicyclic system, the effect is even larger. You see the difference in rates is very, very high. Now you may feel that this is now anti, this and the two groups are very anti. However, because of the high steric strain, the disrotatory inward twisting of the CC bonds of the ring results in very large strain which is responsible for the lower reactivity of this diastereomer compared to the endotosylate where the outward motion now of the CC bond takes place. Okay, so in one case, okay, the disrotatory in takes place, in the other case, the this rotatory out takes place. Let's see one more example of the three membered ring systems. Aziridines are isoelectronic with the cyclopropyl anion. That means they are 4N systems. 4N systems will undergo con rotatory ring opening and ring closing under thermal conditions. And obviously, they will undergo disrotatory ring opening or ring closing under photochemical conditions. You can open up aziridines in thermal conditions to give you 1,3 dipoles. These 1,3 dipoles can now be trapped using dipolarophiles like dimethyl acetylene dicarboxylate, the structure of which is shown here to give you a 1,3 dipolar cycloaddition. This cycloadduct results in a five-membered ring system. Now you can see here, these two are cis, whereas in this particular case, these two are trans to each other. If this was not stereospecific, if the ring opening of these aziridines was not stereospecific, then these two would be exactly the same. You would not get selectivity in the cycloaddition. The very fact that two isomeric 1,3 dipoles are formed clearly indicates that this reaction of ring opening is highly stereospecific. In the four-membered ring system, we have already seen several examples. We can start off with cyclobutenes if you see this particular case, these are 4N systems. Obviously, they will undergo a conrotatory mode of ring opening with high stereo specificity. Okay. Obviously, in one case where you would observe torcoselectivity, okay, so you get only this particular isomer, you do not get this particular isomer. Obviously, because of uh, the mode of ring opening as well as the steric crowding in the transition state leads to this particular selectivity. Similarly, if you see this particular cyclobutene, again at very low temperature, 
mild heating gives you a ring opening to give you this particular isobar. Now, since this has to undergo a con-rotatory ring opening, obviously torcoselectivity will take place, but the relative uh, disposition of the two groups, okay, forces one of the group to go out even though you would expect torcoselectivity, but obviously since this is con-rotatory, one of the groups has to go out. Let's now see the thermal isomerization of this particular diene. This obviously undergoes an isomerization by the formation of the cyclobutene via a con-rotatory pathway. So this particular fellow is now isomerizing to this particular compound via the formation of this particular cyclobutene. And interestingly, in this particular case, none of these two products which arise from disrotation are formed even after 51 days at high temperature. So these reactions are highly stereospecific and follow only the pathway that is permitted by the woodward hoffman rules. If we see this particular example under photochemical conditions, the ring closing of butadiene and this particular EE isomer or CE isomer as we are seeing in this particular uh, diagram under photochemical conditions, these will obviously follow a con-rotatory, sorry, a dis-rotatory mode as would be predicted by the Woodward-Hoffman rules. So under thermal conditions, you will get a con-rotatory mode and in photochemical conditions, you would get a dis-rotatory mode of ring opening or ring closing. If we see this particular system, these are benzocyclobutanes. These undergo uh, electrocyclic ring opening to give something called as the orthoquinone dimethane. These orthoquinone dimethanes are extremely reactive. And these now you can see here are a 4 pi system and they can be trapped via a cycloaddition process. For example, if you see this particular compound, this is a meso compound, okay, gives you this particular isomer upon 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. Whereas this is not meso, this is racemic, okay, it is C2 symmetric, gives you this particular meso compound clearly indicating that these are now undergoing an electrocyclic ring opening in the con-rotatory mode. Another example of the formation of the orthoquinone dimethane in this particular case, this is forming a very reactive orthoquinone dimethane which is now trapped by this substituent in a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition giving you specifically this particular isomer. We'll see why this isomer uh, generates when we study the cycloaddition processes. Coming forward to the cyclizations and ring openings of five-membered ring systems, let's first see the cationic systems. Let's see the pentadienyl cation which can go to the cyclopentanyl ion. That is a 4N system. Obviously, this is a 4N system. So, this will follow the Woodward-Hoffman rules. 4N systems, thermal conditions will give you a con-rotatory uh, electrocyclic reaction, whereas the anion systems, 4N plus 2 systems, will give you a dis-rotatory electrocyclic reaction in the ground state. Let's consider these three alcohols. Okay, These are all isomeric alcohols, isomeric at the double bond. Okay, 
under acidic conditions leads to the loss of this particular OH generating a cation. In this particular cation, if you draw it in this way, this will cyclize to give you this particular stereochemistry. Okay, give you the trans stereochemistry. Whereas in the other isomers, if you see here, this was from the cis cis alcohol this is from the cis trans alcohol and you are getting different stereochemistries in each case in each of these cases the cation finally may be trapped by a nucleophile so if the cation has to be trapped with a nucleophile at a later stage you can actually generate these particular intermediates by different methods so these were synthesized separately treated with chlorosulfonic acid at low temperature and these were studied and their structures were found exactly similar or matching to these alcohols so these also are involved in highly stereospecific pericyclic reactions that is the electrocyclic ring closures one very related reaction is the nazarov reaction which is the protic or the bronsted or lewis acid catalyzed ring closing of divinyl ketones or their acid labile precursors again involving pentadienyl cations initially in 1903 forlander and schuster saw a particular transformation which went like this when they treated dibenzylidine acetone they ended up getting a cyclic ketone at that point of time the mechanism of this particular transformation was not known around 40 years later nazarov was able to explain and to diversify this particular transformation when he generated the allyl vinyl ketone he got the cyclopentenone system and they were able to explain the pathway for this particular transformation what is the general reaction the general reaction is when you start off with a divinyl ketone or its precursor and you are able to generate pentadienyl cation then this can undergo either a conrotatory or a disrotatory ring closure depending on whether it is a thermal or a photochemical cyclization and whether it undergoes a loss of a proton or it is attacked with a nucleophile it can give rise to a variety of ring systems this is synthetically a very useful transformation so if you start off with a system like this, then under thermal conditions, the conrotatory ring closure takes place, gives you this kind of a five-membered pentenone system, whereas under photochemical conditions, you end up getting a disrotatory ring closure, gives you this type of pentenone system. The difference, major difference, lies in the stereochemistry of the two substrates. What is the mechanism of this transformation? The mechanism of this transformation is the first step is the coordination to either Lewis acid or Bronsted acid, leading to a pentadienylic cation, which is this. This now undergoes under thermal conditions a conrotatory ring closure to give you a cyclic carbocation which is this now this may be captured by a nucleophile so you can add a nucleophile or this may undergo deprotonation or it might undergo a further rearrangement now the electrocyclization can proceed either in a clockwise or counterclockwise fashion. We have seen that earlier, torcoselectivity, thereby generating two diastereomers. So depending on the substrates, you will get that particular diastereomer. Obviously, the sense of torcoselection, we have seen 
is primarily controlled by steric factors such as the torsional and non-bonding interactions between the substituents in the vicinity of the newly forming bond. Obviously, under photochemical conditions, the cyclization will proceed in a disrotatory manner. We'll see some examples of the Nazarov reaction. You see this particular example that we are seeing here, Br3 ethrate first coordinates with the ketone to give you a pentadienyl cation system arising out of this. This now undergoes a thermal reaction. This is carried out under reflux. So it undergoes a thermal reaction, obviously a conrotatory ring closing which is accompanied by the loss of the TMS group and at the same time the BF3 leads to the elimination of the OBN group also generating this fantastic tricyclic system in one single step. Look at this particular transformation. Here the FeCl3 is used as the Lewis acid leads to the coordination of at this position and thereby generating a, once again out of this particular system a pentadienyl cation which undergoes now a conrotatory ring closure. You can see here this particular bond and this particular bond are anti or trans to each other leading to the anti or the maintaining of the stereochemistry at this particular position. This now undergoes an olefination reaction with paraformaldehyde gives you this particular functional group on the cyclopentenone. This is an indole system. You can see here you can make a polycyclic system, a four cycle system just by treating this with a Bronsted acid. Again, once again, it undergoes a conrotatory ring closing reaction, gives you this cyclopentenone in a highly stereospecific manner. Same here, once again, BF3 ethrate is used as Lewis acid, gives you this particular transformation, obviously because of selectivity issues you have a mixture of diastereomers in which one of them predominates over the other. You can see here the closure between the two is highly stereospecific. This is a beautiful example of the Nazarov reaction where you can see here the bicyclic systems undergo Nazarov reaction and ring closure in the conrotatory manner at 0 degrees Celsius. First, the generation of the cation from the starting alcohol leads to this particular species. It is a highly stabilized species, undergoes a 4N conrotatory ring closure followed by loss of a proton to give you this particular product. From here, in this isomeric alcohol, we can see here, this also gives you a similar product. The only difference between the two is the structure of the bicycle or the nature of the bicycle or the bridgehead that is there in the starting material. We now move on to the six-membered ring systems in which we will see both the thermal and photochemical electrocyclizations. Obviously, we will consider the cyclohexadiene and cyclo and the hexatriene systems. Obviously, these also follow the Woodward Hoffman rules for six electron systems and will undergo a disrotatory cyclization under thermal conditions and a conrotatory ring closure or ring opening under photochemical conditions. So, some of these examples are displayed here. So, this undergoes a disrotatory under thermal conditions to give you this particular isomer. So you, we are having the disrotation in at this particular position. Same here in this particular case, 
these two are now trans to each other because of the orientation in the starting material and since it is undergoing a disrotation the ring closure leads to the trans isomer in this particular case again you see at 80 degrees we have a disrotatory ring closure leading to this particular orientation In this particular case, these two are isomeric. The starting material is isomeric to this particular starting material. And we can see here, both of them incidentally lead to the same product. And you can see why, because both of them give rise to a disrotatory ring closure. In the photochemical conditions, obviously the con-rotatory ring closure or opening mode will be predominant and very often you can get a photostationary state which will consist of an equilibrium mixture of both the ring opened and the ring closed product. So you can see here after con-rotation, the same material which we saw on the previous slide will now give you the trans or the anti-product. And this upon ring opening will give you this particular isomer which is according to the con-rotatory ring opening. Even in this particular isomer you can see both of these from this. Clearly this is both cases this is a con-rotatory ring opening. In the case of cyclic conjugated trienes, for example this, these can undergo electrocyclic ring closure to give you bicyclic systems of this kind. In many cases you can have heteroatoms, okay, where X could be either a carbon or you could have any other atom which is suitable for that particular transformation. Now, under photochemical conditions, what happens to these systems? You see here, this we know is a 6-electron cyclization in this particular cyclooctatetraene. In cyclooctatetraene, if you see here, under thermal conditions and photochemical conditions, surprisingly, you are seeing the same product. Why? Because in this particular case, this is acting as a 6-electron system, whereas in photochemical case, this is acting as a 4-electron system. In both the cases, according to the woodward hoffman rules, these are undergoing disrotatory ring closures. Why does this happen? Because the transfused bicyclic structure, if this is carried out, under photochemical conditions and it reacts as a six electron system would give you a transfused bicyclic structure that would be highly strained. Therefore, this particular system now undergoes a four electron disrotatory ring closure, thereby generating exactly the same species that is coming from the six electron disrotatory ring closure. Let's see the photochemical cyclization of cis stilbene to dihydrophenanthrene. Now, this has been widely used in variety of synthesis, especially in case of angular fused polyaromatic hydrocarbons. Sometimes these are used in the synthesis of helicenes as well as variety of natural products. Under photochemical conditions, stilbene or trans stilbene can isomerize. So the trans stilbene can isomerize very easily to the cis stilbene. Now this is in perfect position to give you a six electron photochemical conrotatory ring closure. This can be oxidized very easily to the aromatic system giving you phenanthrene systems. Same here in photochemical conditions you can get very nice cyclization via conrotatory ring closures okay very often when you have suitable substituents okay on the still being unit these electrocyclizations can be made reversible and this can give you a very important phenomena called as 
photochromism in which case the ortho methyl substituents which are these will prevent the oxidization or the aromatization of the phenanthrene you see here in this particular case this was pretty easy to oxidize whereas here it is not possible to oxidize or aromatize the dihydrophenanthrene to the parent aromatic system. Therefore, this reaction can be made reversible in one particular case. You can get one particular wavelength to give you a cyclization and in the other case, the other wavelength can give you a ring opening. So, under different photolytic conditions, the reaction can be reversed. Now, apart from benzenide kind of systems, heteroaromatics also undergo electrocyclic reactions. For example, this particular system that you can see here, this under visible light will undergo a ring opening to give you this species, whereas this under UV light will undergo a cyclization to give you this particular system. And this is a very typical case of photochromism. In this particular case, it has been observed that up to 10 raised to 4 times the reversibility can be observed without any degradation of the material. Moving further to 8-membered ring systems in accordance to the Woodward-Hoffman rules, the decatetraenes can undergo electrocyclization in the conrotatory mode. So how many electron systems do we have? We have 2, 4, 6, 8. That means a 4N system. 4N system will obviously under thermal conditions give you a conrotatory uh, reaction, electrocyclic reaction. Under thermal conditions, you will generate systems like these which are rather unstable thermally and these will undergo a disrotatory because now these are 2, 4, 6 electron systems, 4n plus 2. This therefore uh, undergoes a disrotatory ring closure to give you the fused bicyclic systems. In many cases, you may not observe the intermediate because the reaction is very feasible and is pretty fast. Now, obviously, from the stereochemistry of the final product, we can infer the selectivity or the mode of cyclization in the first case. So, from the selectivity of this particular transformation, we can clearly indicate that this is a 4N system and undergoes a conrotatory ring closure. Now, the thermal isomerization of these kind of tetraenes also depends on variety of substituents. For example, if you have phenyl substituents, at 190 degrees, you get a mixture of several products. Obviously, these are uh, polyene systems. Polyene systems undergo a variety of transformations at such high temperatures. However, at pretty low temperatures, this particular fellow the four electron system can now be trapped with dimethyl acetylene dicarboxylate to give you a Diels-Alder transformation. This Diels-Alder adduct can be isolated quite easily and the reaction is very clean. Whereas when you have the diester, in this particular case, such issues do not arise and even at such low temperature, you end up getting a fantastic reaction, the conrotatory ring closure and followed by a disrotatory ring closure to give you this stable product. In this particular case, surprisingly, this is not observed. It directly, the reaction is so feasible that it directly gives you this particular end product arising out of two cyclizations. Going further, even larger systems can undergo pericyclic ring closures via electrocyclizations. For example, in this particular case, this is 16 anulene, this particular compound, and it undergoes 
a variety of uh, cyclizations. It can behave as six electron systems in this particular case, giving you a double annulation. Okay. Either you can have a thermal reaction or you can have a photochemical reaction. In one case, it is a disrotatory ring closure. In the other case, it is a conrotatory ring closure. In this particular case, which is the cyclodecapentaene system, this also behaves typically like a six electron system, undergoes a symmetry allowed disrotation under thermal conditions and a con rotation under photochemical conditions. Okay, this can now further react under thermal conditions to give you this highly unstable trans polyene system. This under photochemical conditions can give you the same system and these are quite reversible. This can be reversed back. This particular uh, system can be reversed back to the starting polyene to the starting cyclodecapentaene system under photochemical conditions. Let us see some of the applications of electrocyclizations in nature. Consider the this particular molecule. This is the endiandric acid D. This is a natural product. There is there are several of the endiandric acids in nature. You have A, B, C, D, E. And in 1980, the discoverer of endiandric acids proposed that the biosynthesis may involve a series of electrocyclic reactions starting from this particular polyene precursor. So this polyene precursor can undergo a 8 pi con rotatory electrocyclization to give you this particular bond. Now this can undergo, this is a 6 pi system, can undergo a disrotatory electrocyclization to give you this particular species which is endiandric D. Now, why do we find this very convincing? We find this very convincing is because the stereochemistry of the product matches what you would expect from the Woodward Hoffman rule. So the first, like we mentioned, the first step would be an 8 pi electrocyclic reaction. Therefore, obviously it is a 4N system. Thermally allowed would be a conrotatory ring closure would give you this particular ring closure in a trans kind of substituent. The further step would give you a 6 pi system. Now this can undergo an electrocyclization in a disrotatory manner. But here we have a problem. Now there are already two stereocenters present. Because there are already two stereocenters present, now you have two modes of disrotatory cyclization. In one case, the disrotatory cyclization gives you endiandric acid D. In the other case, it gives you endiandric acid E. Both are isomers of each other. So you can see here, both are isomeric at this particular point. Now this was proved by Professor Casey Nikolaou in 1982 when he synthesized the polyene system and did the ring closure in one step. So he was able to isolate both endiandric acid D as well as endiandric acid E. He then moved further to make endiandric acid A which is just from starting with endiandric acid E, you do an intramolecular Diels-Alder cycloaddition to give you this particular highly stereospecific product coming from a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition. So this is a fantastic example of how synthesis can be done involving three pericyclic reactions on one particular so starting from one particular polyene system. Another example of electrocyclic reactions in nature is the synthesis of provitamin D2. Ergosterol, which 
is produced from cholesterol undergoes an electrocyclic reaction that is a ring opening reaction to give you provitamin D2. Now how many ring, uh, electron systems is this? This is a six electron system. Under photochemical conditions the six electron system will obviously give you a chondrotatory ring opening. So obviously the disrotatory thermal uh, opening would be impossible because it would give you a trans double bond in one of the uh, two ring systems. So that would not be allowed. So this is a photochemical chondrotatory ring opening. Now this undergoes a chondrotatory ring opening in just simple sunlight to give you provitamin D2. What does provitamin D2 do? Provitamin D2 on 1,7 sigma tropic shift gives you vitamin D2. Now because this is a photochemical process, the formation of provitamin D2 is a photochemical process, vitamin D2 cannot be generated unless you have provitamin D2. Okay. So the countries where there is not much of sunlight, normally people have vitamin D deficiency because provitamin D2 cannot be synthesized from this particular chondrotatory 6 pi electrocyclic ring opening procedure. All right, that brings us to the end of this particular lecture. Today we saw electrocyclic reactions and a variety of uh, transformations arising from ring opening and ring closing. In our next class, we will see the theory and concept in cycloaddition reactions. Thank you everybody. We will see you on Monday in our next class. Goodbye.